In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some examples of converting a standard form of a complex number to the polar form of the complex number. So re remember that when we're converting to polar form, we need two things to describe the complex number, and that is the modulus of the complex number, so the length of that vector from the origin, as well as the argument or the theta so the angle that that vector makes with the, uh, the positive direction of the real axes. So let's graph this out on an argon, an argon plane. So real on our uh, horizontal axes, our vertical axes is the imaginary units. Okay, And let's graph exactly what we're given right now. First, negative 1 in the real. So that's about... Uh, Put that right here okay and then we have a square root of 3 in dj and that's negative so let's put that about right here negative root 3 so if I were to draw this with a red arrow from the origin it looks something like this this is our z so what is, well first, let's, let's write r, the modulus. This one is pretty easy because we know that that's just the length of the vector. So I'll label that as r. And remember, we also need the argument. So in this case, let's think, what would the argument be? Remember, the argument is the, the uh, angle that z makes with the positive direction of the real axes. So in this case, I'm going to start on the positive side of the real axes, and I'm going to go all the way to z. So this is my theta, okay? That entire thing. So let's let's try solving for the uh, modulus of z first, or r. This one is relatively easy because if you're not super familiar with your special triangles, um, or if you're given some weird units for uh, the x and y coordinates then you might you could just use Pythagorean theorem right it's a right angle triangle so if you were to use Pythagorean theorem you would have negative 1 squared plus negative root 3 squared this is the square root of 1 plus 3 1 plus 3 is 4 square root of 4 is 2 so the length of this vector will be 2 I want to also point out that you could immediately jump to this if you recognize that this is a special triangle, right? So let's draw this right side up. The special triangle right here, that's the right angle. We have one, we have two, and we have square root of three, okay? and. If you're wondering how to, a quick way of memorizing these special triangles, you can think of, if you were to draw an equilateral triangle with side lengths of two, you can start with that and then just split it in half. You'll immediately have two sides and then you can figure out what that last side is pretty easily. And then if you've drawn this somewhat to scale, you'll know that the smaller angle is going to be pi over six and the larger angle will be pi over three great so we have we know that our horizontal is one our vertical is root three so that's telling us that pi over three is our um, like primary angle not the theta that we want but it's the primary angle we know that we are in the bottom left quadrant so we actually need to do pi plus pi over 3 because we know that I'll label it in blue this angle is pi over 3 and this angle right here is pi so it's just pi plus pi over 3 so you should be able to figure this out that's 4 pi over 3 okay and let's write this a little bit lower Don't do that yet. 
z is equal to and remember polar form we have r so that is 2 times cosine of the argument and that's 4 pi over 3 plus j sine of the argument 4 pi over 3 right and remember the angles are the same in the cosine and the sine just make sure that you're expressing which what angle is in uh, in the proper quadrant that's going to give us our proper negative or positive value for the standard form if you were to convert it back um, cool so this is your final answer for the standard or the polar form of z I want to do one more example okay convert w is equal to negative 4 plus 4j into standard form so we're gonna follow the exact same method that we did the last time we're gonna graph graph this complex number on an argon plane we got our real axes we've got our imaginary axes minus 4 and we've got positive 4j okay something like this that should be as, as straight as you can that's w remember our length is r pretty easy to deduce and our argument in this case positive direction of the real axes up until the vector that's going to be our theta okay great so again let's try to avoid using Pythagorean theorem for now let's get used to using our special triangles the thing that I want to notice or that you should notice with this is that the real and the imaginary are going an equal amount of units in the real and the imaginary direction so this should be an indicator that there's this special triangle the triangle that's got angles of pi over 4 pi over 4 or uh, 45 degrees and it's commonly seen as 1 1 square root of 2 so we have 4 in the horizontal 4 in the vertical so we can just multiply this all or everything by 4 we're just scaling it by a factor of 4 so that means that the modulus is 4 root 2 and if you're using Pythagorean theorem you probably have to do some simplification to get this uh, radical and if we use the special triangle it's super easy so try to use special triangles for things like this if you can now let's get the angle it's pretty easy to tell that this is pi over 4 we just need to make sure that we're uh, expressing this angle in the proper quadrant so remember we've got 90 degrees here which is pi over 2 and that's this and then we go another pi over 4 over okay so you could also think of it as pi minus pi over 4 because it's gonna be the same it's 45 degrees on both sides it's exactly through the uh, hor through that diagonal line split perfectly in half so if you were to do that you should find that you will get 3 pi over 4 as your angle it's just pi minus pi over 4 or pi over 2 plus pi over 4 same thing and then finally you can write it as w is equal to the modulus 4 root 2 times cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus j times sine of 3 pi over 4 and that's really all there is to it 